Welcome back to Wise Concepts with part two of your first game jam with Wise. Now that you have your team and are properly set up to work with SourceTree and GitHub, we'll now be working with other programmers and parsing through their scripts in order to incorporate our own Wise scripts. Then we'll go over some common Wise type errors that may come up and how to best resolve them. First thing, while this is an obvious concept, it is something that is often missed in teams, communication. You will have multiple people working on the same project simultaneously, which can lead to major conflicts. For example, if two people are working on the same script, or group of scripts, then pushed to the GitHub repository from each of their individual computers, those now have contradictory information. Every member on the team should tell the rest about what they're working on and what parts of the project they'll be affecting. The best way to resolve this? Delegation. You're working on the player controller, then I'll work on the ambient sounds which don't conflict with the player's scripts. Next thing, organization. During any discussion of the game's design, I'm always writing down a list of music and sounds that I have a feeling will be included in the project. This is just a preliminary list, however, since the project will likely change as new ideas are presented. So the approach that I felt was best for most of the teams I was on was a reactive approach. If the designer makes a change to the game's design, I react by adding or removing features from the music and sound list. If the programmer pushes the change to GitHub, I react by adding sounds to that particular change. For example, a programmer adds the character animation for a player, so I react by adding in the player's footsteps. With those things gone over, let's get programming. But now there's one thing very different from working with Wise and Unity by yourself. You're now working with someone else's programming, and outside of simply asking the programmer to help guide you through their scripts, it's up to you to figure out where your Wise scripts are going to be reasonably placed. To practice this, I've loaded up Unity's 3D game kit and have a few challenges for you to add Wise to it. First thing, download the 3D game kit by Unity Technologies from the Unity store and import it into your project. Link will be down in the description. Next, you'll need the following events in your WISE project before you get started. Whatever sound design you do for these events is up to you, but for the purposes of this video, I put the same sound effect for most of these events. Note, if a sound is not played on the player, like all the enemy sounds, then you'll have to configure the sound in its positioning tab. We'll have some videos helping you out in the Google Doc found in the description. Finally, we'll be doing all of this in the 3D Game Kits Level 1 scene, which is found in the Assets Scene folder under the Gameplay folder. All right, let's go to your challenges. In this scene, there is a staff that the player picks up and uses as a weapon. The object in its entirety is named Weapon Pedestal and is found under the Level 01 Gameplay Object. The goal of this challenge is for the player to pick up the staff then for a sound effect to play upon pickup. Here's a good procedure to follow. Find the scripts and components associated with the staff pickup. There are children objects under the weapon pedestal, so make sure you look at those as well. Find out what the scripts and components do and deduce if they are directly relevant to the staff's pickup. And as a nice gimme, even though Unity's built-in audio listener is disabled due to Wise being incorporated, all of the game's current audio scripts are still intact. You can use the current audio references as a guide to place your new wise ones. Before you get started on this challenge, you will need to make a script of your own in order to make this work, and it must be attached to the player. Remember, the player is always the main camera, so you'll need to find that first. So if you think you're ready to take this on, go ahead and get started, then skip ahead to my solution. Otherwise, wait around for a few hints. There's only one unique script associated with the weapon pedestal and it's found on the staff take trigger object. Notice how in the editor, not inside the script, there's a list of actions that trigger upon entering the staff's trigger zone. An audio source is one of them. You only need one function in the script that you're making. Mine is public void get staff. Inside of get staff, there should only be one line of code. And if you've practiced wise a bunch, it might be a line of code that you're very familiar with. For those of you who didn't quite get the challenge, that's okay because it was intended to be challenging. It took me a couple of hours to wrap my head around it myself. So let's take a look around on the weapon pedestal. The parent object doesn't appear to have anything useful for us, just a transform. So if we look underneath, we'll find staff take trigger, which sounds very promising. So if we go in there, we'll find the interact on trigger script. Now, I could go into the script, but I can already basically see the script's function in the editor. 
In this on-enter box, we see a series of actions that Unity will play out when the player enters this trigger. One of them is conveniently an audio source, so we know we're on the right track. So I'm going to hit the plus button, which is going to add another action for the script to carry out. Now we know we need to post an event just like we would with most things on Wise, and that event needs to be posted to the player. So let's make a script that'll do just that. To be more organized, I'm going to place the script into a separate audio folder. So I have a folder that's just devoted to the scripting that I added to the project. I'm going to make a new c -sharp script named Audio Events, and now all I need to do is attach the script to the player. Now my first instinct is to attach the script to Ellen, who is the character that we're controlling, but you may have noticed that the camera is not directly attached to Ellen's object. However, we are in luck, because an object named Camera Rig is right above Ellen. The main camera isn't on the Camera Rig either, but in Camera Rig's children, you'll find an object called the Camera Brain. This one does have the main camera, so this would be perfect for attaching our script. Now that we're in the script, get rid of the update function, but keep the start function. We'll need it for later. Next, we're going to make a public void get staff. It needs to be public because other scripts are going to be interacting with it. Inside of this function, we're going to post our events. aka sound engine post event place staff take. Then we're going to post it on this camera object. So you can simply write game object here. Let's test that out. Hmm. Why didn't that work? I got an error that says that my event play staff take wasn't recognized. I'm pretty sure my Wise is up to date and I didn't misspell the event name. My mistake is that I didn't load my sound bank into the project beforehand. These make up roughly half of my mistakes whenever seeing these errors. I might find a better place for this later, but for now, adding an AK bank in Wise Global is a reasonable spot. Let's try this again. Awesome! The player picked up the staff, then I had the music playing. That's a good start! Let's move on to the next challenge. The enemy chompers have a series of sounds that they cycle through. Grunts, a sound they make when they spot the player, attacks, and a final death sound. For now, we're going to ignore the footsteps. All of these are handled by a single script. While everything can be technically done in the script, you can utilize your audio event script as well. Go ahead and give that challenge a shot, or stick around for some hints. There is only one script on the chompers that make references to audio sources. Follow those audio sources to where they're used in the script. All four audio sources are each in different functions of the same script. Two of them are towards the top, two of them are towards the bottom. Alright, let's check out our enemies. Go under the enemies object where you'll find several chompers. Now, these chompers are all prefabs, so this is where you'll want to be careful. So if you make any edits to them outside of scripts, you want to make sure you edit the full prefab and not just the individual instance of this prefab. Hit the right arrow button to go to the chompers prefab. We won't be editing anything about the chompers external design, just the script within it. But this is still good practice. Now the first thing that stands out to me about the chomper is the chomper behavior script. Attacks, grunts, and things like that are a part of the chomper's behavior, so this is a good place to look for audio placements. Plus, this script has several references to audio, so that helps confirm that we're on the right track. The first two references are easy to find. There is a public void grunts and a public void spotted. Good start! The next two references are further down, one in public void death and the last one being in public void apply damage. Even without the current audio references helping to guide where we put our wise coding, all of these function names help to give an idea of where things belong. Now, I can put all my post events into this script, but I prefer to have everything being handled in my audio events script. So now we get to work with variables and having those variables be interacted with between one script and another. So let's jump over to our audio events script and make a new function. Public void enemy sounds. We're going to add in our post event just as we did with get staff, but now we run into an issue. One, we're going to have four events coming from chomper behavior and more on the way. Do we really want to make a different function for every single behavior and post event? That would get messy. 
Instead, we're just going to have chump our behavior tell us what the event name is. Then we'll pass that event name into our post events. And we'll also need to post the event on the enemy as well. So we'll need the chumper behavior to pass us the chumper's game object. So in the parentheses, we'll add string event name, game object, enemy. So when the chumper behavior references this enemy sound function, it'll have to give the function both a string, which will be our event name, and a game object, which will act as our enemy. All right, let's jump back to chumper behavior. The first thing we need to do is put in a member variable on top so that our chumper behavior script can interact with our audio event script. Below all of these random audio player variables, I'm going to add private audio events audio events equals new audio events. Make sure to add the parentheses on the end here. All right, now we can finally add in our scripts. Let's start with the grunt. I'm going to replace everything in public void grunt with audio events so that our script interacts with the audio event script, then dot enemy sounds so we're directly referencing the enemy sounds function in audio events. Now remember what we had to do with the enemy sounds function? Is looking for some information, the event name, and the enemy game object. So inside of the parentheses, we're going to add play enemy grunt, comma, game object. And that's it! All we have to do is copy paste this code into the other three spots we found, then just change the name of the event. Play enemy spotted, play enemy death, and finally, play staff hit. That should do it! Let's test it out! Now we need to add footsteps to the player. These include sounds for jumping and landing. We aren't going to worry about terrain, so the only thing you have to worry about is having the footsteps sound play whenever the player's foot touches the ground. Just like with the chumper behavior, this is all handled by a single script inside of Ellen's objects. See if you can utilize the audio events script in this part as well. Give it a go, or wait for the hints. You'll be doing nearly identical scripting that you did with the enemy behavior, except now you want the event to be posted on the main camera. However, do not attempt to post the event to game object like you did with the first challenge. This will come up with unsavory errors. There are two lines that you will want to add to your script. They go in two separate spots, see where they best fit. This challenge has you doing very similar things as the last challenge. Let's go look for a behavior script for Ellen, our current player avatar. We'll go into her object and see what script she has. Player controller seems like the most promising one, especially with all these references to random audio player. Everything already seems to be similar to the chumper behavior. Hop into the script and see where the random audio player variables are being referenced. You'll eventually find the play audio function. Well that definitely sounds like a good spot. Before we replace any of this code, let's hop back into our audio events script and make a new function. Public void player sounds. Just like before, we're going to have the player controller pass in a string which will represent our event's name. However, this time the player controller will not pass in its object. That's going to be handled in this script. As you probably noticed, I already added a couple of lines of script. The first one, public static game object player, will represent our player. Now, that game object needs to search for the main camera. That's what the line in void start is for. Player equals find object of type, camera dot game object. Some of you may be wondering why we can't simply use game object like we did with the staff pickup. Well, in the case of the staff pickup, the staff trigger was directly referencing the audio events script that was placed onto the main camera. However, in the case of the player controller script, it'll simply be referencing the audio events script itself, which isn't attached to anything. In this instance, if it looks for game object, it will return null, since the audio events script is no longer attached to a game object. With that explanation complete, let's finish up our post event with the event name, comma, player. Back to the player controller script, we're going to jump up to the member variables, just like we did with the chomper behavior, and add our reference to the audio events script. Private audio events, audio events, equals new audio events. Scroll back down to the player audio function, and now we're going to replace all of these current audio sources. First, play player footsteps, then play player land, play player jump, and while we're at it, We'll add play player hurt, play player death, and finally, play player attack. Let's test all that out. Since these are all referencing the same sound effect in my project, this is going to be a bit... noisy.
We need to add footsteps to the enemy now. The interesting thing about this is that the enemy's footsteps aren't handled the same way that the player's footsteps are handled. And if you're just looking at scripts, you may never find out how it works. This is because the enemy footsteps are handled by animation and animation events. Notes, all the animations in this project are read only, so you can't edit them. You can, however, edit the chomper behavior. The way you handle this is identical to challenge number two, so no new hints are necessary, but I would check out the animation section to see how animation events work. All right, so let's hop back into the chomper prefab, and I'm going to open it up in the animation tab. If you don't have an animation tab, then you can add it by going into window, animation, animation, or simply hit control six. Inside of the chomper animation, you'll see all the keyframes, and above those, there are a series of what are known as animation events. There are a few called play step, and one called grunt. You may recognize these as function names in the chomper behavior script. This is precisely how these functions are triggered, through these animation events. So since this is a read-only animation, I can't actually show you how to make an animation event, so we'll do it on another object. I'm going to make a new cube object and make a new animation for this cube. So just for fun, I'm going to add a few keyframes of this cube just flying around. Then on one of the keyframes, I'm going to hit this add event button, which will add a new animation event where my cursor is. Inside of this animation is a single function. If you go into the functions drop down menu, then you'll see that it doesn't have any functions to pick from. That's because the cube doesn't have any scripts attached to it. So really quick, I'm going to add a new test script to the cube and add a single function inside of this script. Within the function, I'm just going to have it print a message to the console to ensure that this animation event is working properly. Back in the animation event, it'll now recognize our new function. Let's put it in there and test it out. Our cube is now whisking through the air, and every time it completes a cycle, it is now printing thing did in the console. We have now successfully added an animation event. The only thing different we would want to do is add a post event rather than a print to our function. So let's now finish up our chomper. Go back to the chomper behavior script and head into the play step function. We will replace everything in here with audio events dot enemy sounds play enemy footsteps game object. Again, these are referencing the exact same sound effects as everything else, so this is going to be noisy. Let's test it out. I'll keep this section brief and only go into common wise errors that I ran into the most. Down in the Google Docs, I'll link to a few bits of documentation that go a little more in depth about other common wise errors. If your bank load failed, then it is possible that you either tried to load a bank that doesn't exist, a bank that is corrupted, or a bank that doesn't match the version of wise that you connected to your Unity project. The resolution to this is quite simple. Generate your bank in wise again, making sure it generates without errors, then save your wise project. In Unity's Wise Picker, hit the Generate Sound Banks and Refresh Project buttons. And finally, check where in your project you included an AK bank. Make sure that it is referencing the correct bank. This is by far my most encountered error, and it is usually because of one of three problems. You did not generate the correct sound bank in your project, or the sound bank does include the event you're posting. Check the Wise Picker to make sure the event is there. You spelled the event name incorrectly, or the event could not find the game object that it's supposed to post to. This error may also be accompanied by a null reference exception. I have seen this error pop up many times, but as far as I know, it is often caused by a simple glitch in your audio output. If you reopen your project or restart your computer, it will usually resolve itself. If not, you may want to run the game in Wise's profiler to see how much CPU and memory Wise is using while the game is running. If it's high, then you'll want to find means of lowering it. Speaking of Wise's profiler, it is one of the best methods of diagnosing problems between Wise and Unity. It will tell you what events have been posted and where, and will make references to changes in things like states, switches, and RTBCs. It will also have diagrams of sound effects being played, what buses they're being played on, and if any effects are on them. In the description, I'll link to some videos and documentation on how to best use the profiler to your advantage. That's it for this video. Check out the Google Doc below for reference material that was used in researching this video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, compose a comment below or message me at my Twitter, at Kara Composer. This video series is driven by community support, 
So if there's something you would like to see in a future video, do not be afraid to ask. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.